If you are a developer who's been thinking about creating a new portfolio or just improving an existing one, then this is the video for you. During the past two weeks, I have reviewed over 40 different developer portfolios and in this video, I'm going to share my main findings. What is up guys and welcome to another episode of Developer Habits, a YouTube channel for software engineers interested in growth mindset, developer lifestyle and technical tutorials. If these are topics that you are interested in, then please hit the subscribe button below to get more quality content. My name is Ketmar, I am a full stack engineer from Estonia and today I'm going to share 9 tips that I came up with after reviewing over 40 different developer portfolios. I hope there are some insightful tips for you that you can use in order to improve your portfolio. Tip number one, define the purpose of your portfolio. Defining the purpose of your portfolio is super important because this is how you actually define the main target audience. Is it for recruiters, for other developers or for yourself? Based on that, you can make decisions about the design, the structure and so on. For example, if it's for other developers, then you can go crazy with the design and try out new technologies. Whereas if it's for recruiters, you really have to make it clear what are your skills and experience. So the next time you'd start building a portfolio, think about it. Who is your main audience and what's the purpose of the portfolio? Bring out your skills and projects as soon as possible. When people visit developer portfolios, it's usually because they want to learn more about the developer's skills and projects that he or she has been involved with. This is why you should focus on those two things, the skills that you have and also the projects that you have been part of. For example, if you have a one pager, then the second section should already highlight your skills and pet projects that you've done. And regarding projects, the more detailed you go, like sharing the story or the main obstacles that you had to tackle, the better. So next time, when building your portfolio, focus on your skills and your projects. Minimal, original or both. After reviewing 40 developer portfolios, I saw so many different designs and I want to say that you really have to put some effort into at least considering do you want it to be minimalistic, original or maybe both? My advice is that if you are less experienced with web design, go with something minimalistic and simple. And if you are more experienced, you can start bringing in the best practices, adding some originality and make it memorable. Because in the end, it's the design and UX that people remember. Less is more. More about design and user experience. A thing I saw many developers do was that they used different kind of animations and transitions for texts that didn't add much value but did affect my user experience in a negative way. For example, when I land on a page and I have to wait to see the content because it's still animating, then it's not a good user experience and you should think about it. Is it something that you want to have on your page? So. What I want to say is that each time that you have an, have an animation or some kind of transitioning of texts, think about it. Does it add any value? Think about what's the first thing people should notice on your page? When visiting a website, you will get your first impression in less than a second. And it's usually some kind of content and collaboration of colors that make up your mind. This is why I advise you to think about what is the content you want people to notice when they land on your page. You can use like big fonts and a contrast of different colors to make the content stand out, but it's important to consciously make that decision what you want to stand out. Is it your name? Is it your skill set? Think about it and put it on your landing page. Percentages and skill bars tell me nothing. Ah! Something that I have done myself in the past is adding some kind of progress bars or percentages to describe my skills. But when you start thinking about it, it doesn't add any value. For example, if you show that you have 100% of knowledge in JavaScript, well, what does it mean? That you are the best JavaScript developer in the world? I don't think so. Instead, 
you could use things like your projects or, or number of years that you have experience with certain technology. These are the numbers and content that is universally understood and also adds some value, for example, to recruiters. So next time when you describe your skills, don't use progress bars or percentages. Do not make me click. A really simple yet effective user experience rule is that you should reduce the number of clicks in order to get somewhere. For example, if I see about me link in your main navigation, then by clicking on it, I expect to be scrolled or redirected to a page where I can actually read about you. I've seen portfolios where for example, I clicked on the About Me section, it scrolled me to another section where there was no information but another link to the About Me page. So next time when you create links, think about what I said. Make it easy to contact you. It's your portfolio. It's about you, your skills and your projects. But you should not forget to make it as easy as possible to contact you. You can do that by inserting contact links into the header or footer and I've also seen many great portfolios that make the contact information fixed so when I scroll around on the page it's easy for me to find a way to contact you. So remember, because next time when a recruiter visits your page it would be easy for them to contact you. Run a Google Lighthouse report to find the simplest mistakes. Most of the pages I reviewed were in a really good shape, both design and performance wise. How do I know? Well, I ran Google Lighthouse report on each one of them. If you don't know, then Google Lighthouse report will give you actionable information on performance, accessibility, usage of best practices, but also SEO. So for example, if you have a missing meta description tag, then Google Lighthouse report will report it to you. So, next time, before hitting this deploy button, make sure that you have tested your website using Google Lighthouse Reports. So this is it guys, 9 tips for developers who want to improve their portfolio. I genuinely hope the content I provided was useful and if you'd like to see more content like this, then please do hit the subscribe button below. I thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!